Do you ever have those moments when you're trying to sleep and all of a sudden an idea pops into your head and you just can't stop thinking about it? Well, that's what today's video is about because I had an idea and today we're gonna experiment and see if it works. Let's get started. So this idea basically came out of me thinking about how we could create sort of like a grid pattern on our weaving. And then my brain went to plaid. And then my brain went to, maybe it doesn't have to be even plaid. But the idea is that could we, this is, just pretend this is my weaving. Could we weave in horizontal pieces into our weaving? And then, you know, we're, we're gonna weave white in between and then sew in vertical lines as well. I think this idea is gonna work well and allow us to still use a regular cotton warp, but have these pieces that almost look like they're part of the warp, but they're not. But the first thing I'm gonna do is cut a few pieces of these yarns and play around with what kind of layout I want to have. So I'm literally like, I, I know this is a bit of a waste, but we need to be able to have a plan because I don't want to sort of go into this randomly and then you know just feel like I don't know where I'm going so I'm just cutting a few pieces of the three colors that I'm going to be using for this grid I'll start with about three of each so let's just play around with some layouts here so I think I need I like the idea of working with odd numbers. So I have five going horizontally. So I think I need five vertically as well. I'm just trying to figure out which color to do. I'm of course a huge fan of this like mustard color. I think I'm gonna do that. So let's cut one more piece of that just to see what it looks like. It's kind of like hard to lay this out on paper but I wanna have some sort of direction so I'm not just weaving in random things and then it doesn't look good at the end. I do like the idea of it sort of being not perfectly even like plaid and doing something like a little bit different. So maybe we'll go with that. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside now and get started with my actual weaving. So I'm going to be using 4-8 cotton and we're gonna, we're gonna do double experimentation today. I'm going to try to weave upside down, which is not something I normally do, but I had a vision of how we could have the vertical strings go down into the actual fringe. And so I kind of want to be able to do the fringe last. It's not something I've done before, so we're just like, we're totally experimenting today. So I'm gonna put on a warp and then we'll get started weaving. And I'm just putting on a single warp, which means we're just putting one string between each notch. So I'm both, I both started and I'm stopping at what's going to be the bottom of the weaving, but the top of my loom. And that's because I wanna hang my dowel directly from the loops at the top. So I don't want to have any of these ends that aren't a proper loop at the top of my piece. Now I'm gonna just make sure that my tension is even. I can tell this string is really loose because that was the one I ended on. So I'm just gonna go through and adjust these strings a little bit. Next, my favorite move is to tape down the loom. So basically all I need to do is make sure that I leave enough room that I can hang the piece directly from the warp strings. I think what would be easiest is to just basically stop my weaving right at the base of this notch bar. Now, will that be a little longer than I would prefer? Maybe as far as like the loops at the top go, but I think that's what we're gonna go with. So I'm going to start with a twining stitch. Well, again, this is gonna be the top of the piece and then we're gonna start weaving. So the way that I laid this out, I would say this is like the bottom and this is the top. So I'm just gonna flip this over so I can sort of have a reference guide that's the right way, but I think this is the kind of piece that would look good either way. I'm going to do a twining stitch and a few rows of plain weave to start. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm ready to put in my first color. Is that what I wanna do? Maybe I'll go a couple more rows. So 
So I'm gonna cut this piece a little bit wider than my actual piece so that I can tuck in those ends later. And I'm just gonna continue using plain weave here. So I'm just gonna go in opposite of my previous row and weave this color in. I'm going back to my background color now, but I need to figure out what I'm gonna do on this edge because since we put this color in, it kind of disrupted our plain weave a little bit. And all we're gonna do to fix that, so this one was coming underneath this warp string, but now we need to go under again because of where this one is laying. So I'm just gonna weave this in and what we're gonna do here, see if I just pulled this, then we've got something weird going on here. So I'm gonna pull this back and all we're gonna do is feed this end through this loop and then that will become our edge. And you can make it so that that little loop sits a little bit further behind. Let's just see how this looks. So as you can see here, this is through this little loop. So it makes the edges a little bit like it sticks out a tiny bit more, but I'm happy with that because it's gonna prevent us from having to tuck in a ton of ends. So I think it's almost time that I added the next color in. And I'm just trying to decide if this is the right spot. I think it is. So I'm gonna stop and put this piece of yellow in. Now there is something to be said that like, maybe we could have done two rows of the colors to make it more prominent, but this is an experimentation, so I'm just gonna kinda keep going with what I'm doing here. What I wanna do, I think, is stagger where we have these different extra loops. So what that means for me is that I'm going to put in one more row of plain weave before I, before I put in the next color so that the next loop going around the color is actually on this side. I just don't want it to look like one side is different than the other, I guess. Now I wanna be careful that I'm not weaving this all way too tight. Um, because we do have to weave in these colors vertically after. So just like on the other side, when I weave, when I go back in with the off white, what I'm going to do here is allow this to loop again. This time though, it is a little bit different because now the yellow yarn is going over the white. Now I don't want my colors to be perfectly spaced. Like I don't necessarily want them like completely even. So I'm gonna put this one in now. So between these two, I had five rows of plain weave and now I only have four, but I kind of want that. I don't want this to be perfect since I'm not trying to do like a perfect plaid. So I ran out of yarn here. I'm gonna grab a new piece. I like to work with about three arms lengths, arm lengths, arm lengths at a time because it's just, it's, it's enough that you can go pretty far, but it's not so much that it gets really annoying to pull it all through. Since I ended on this side, I'm gonna start back on this other side so we don't have too many tails all in a row. So I think I'm ready to do these last two colors now. So I'm gonna do the yellow first. Now I'm just trying to figure out where this pink is gonna go. I wanted to leave a bigger gap between these two colors. Oh, this isn't supposed to be pink. <laughs> it's supposed to be blue, if I'm following my little pattern there. So I need to figure out where this is gonna go. Um, I feel like that's actually a pretty good place. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more plain weave on the bottom. So I think that will get me to about where I wanna be. So I'm gonna add that blue in now. Oh, but I think I need, I'm actually gonna do one more return with the off white. So I think I'm pretty happy with that there. And since I'm almost done this yarn, well, we can get a couple more rows. Actually, probably only one. 
So since this piece is like too short to really continue, I'm just gonna trim it off a little bit and grab a new piece. And now I need to decide how many rows I want before I'm finished. So up here I did six. I think at the bottom, maybe I'll just do four or five and then a twining. Do I even need the twining? I actually don't really need the twining because there's going to be fringe. So I think I'm gonna try no twining and just five rows of plain weave. Okay, so I think I'm quite happy with that. So now we need to do a couple of things. I think we'll sew in the vertical strings now, but I need to keep in mind how long I want my fringe to be because I wanna make sure that I leave enough length of my vertical pieces that I can have it kind of like cascade down into the actual fringe. So the first color I have is the pink. And I think I'm gonna lay this all out before I actually sew them in so I can make sure I know which warp strings I wanna sew them in on. So I'm gonna leave it quite long. So the piece is, it's quite long. I'm gonna cut two of these, all the ones that are in my little mock-up. Okay, so I have all my pieces and I'm gonna start laying them out so we can figure out exactly where we wanna put them. And we have the blue, and I'm gonna keep a little bit of extra so I can tuck them back into the piece. Okay, can you kind of see my vision now? I think this is gonna be really cool. So we're gonna put that one there and that one there. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the pink and I'm going to use just a plastic yarn needle. It's got a nice big I, you can pick these up pretty much anywhere that you can buy yarn. So the craft store, the yarn store, pretty much everywhere, Amazon, like pretty much everywhere is gonna have these. So I'm going to pick the warp string that this is gonna go on. And I think I wanna go pretty close to the edge. So I'm gonna go on the third one in. So I will thread up this needle. And what I'm going to do here, let's zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is on the third warp string in, I'm going to start weaving this in or sewing it in and I'm gonna stay along that exact warp string. So I'm just grabbing the loops that are on top of that warp string. Hopefully that makes sense, but you can kind of see here, you can see the blue through. So I'm just grabbing the loops from the surface of the piece. So this is similar to what we do when we're tucking in ends in the back but we're gonna sew this in. Oh, that's not gonna work. We're not gonna see that. We have to weave it in. Okay. So what we need to do here is it's kind of gonna be similar to how we tuck in ends in the back, but we're going to be weaving. So what that means is I need to go over one, under one. So we're doing a plain weave. Over one, under one, the loops that we're going through. So I'm going, I'm going to go under the first loop. So that's under the twining loop. I'm going along the third warp string. So I'm only focusing on the loops that are sitting on top of that third warp string. So under the first one, over the next one, under, over, under, over. So you can see how we're weaving this in. So let's just pull that through because our needle is pretty short. And again, we're gonna leave a tail here at what is the, going to be the top of our piece so that we can tuck that in later. So leave it about four or so inches long. And then I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way down. So over, under, over, under. All these loops going along the third warp string in. I already love this. I think this is gonna be really cool. Now, what I wanna make sure of is that I'm not pulling on this super, super tight, but that's the first one in, and I already think this looks so cool. So now I'm gonna take the blue string, 
or the blue yarn. And I need to pick where this one is going. I'm thinking we'll skip three on this one and then maybe on the next one we'll skip four. So again, that they're not perfectly even. For this first one, we went on the third warp string in. Now I'm going to go on one, two, three, the sixth warp string in. So again, I'm starting on the under because I want this to tuck behind this twining. And then we're just going over under these loops. So now we have our next color in. I'm letting that go down to the bottom of the weaving. And then we can grab the third color, which is this yellow. And now I'm going to skip. So for between these two, I skipped two warp strings. Now I'm gonna skip three. So one, two, three and then go on the fourth, starting on the underneath. So we can go under the twining and then over under all the way down. And I'm just following along. I don't have to count the warp strings in. I can see where that warp string is, so I'm just following it along. So I'm pulling a little bit of slack back up because again, when we make it too tight, it almost makes the yarn, like it makes it skinnier because we're pulling it tight. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I need to figure out where this one's gonna go and then where this one's gonna go. And I kind of think right about there looks great. So all the colors are woven in. Let's zoom back out and see what this looks like. We need to finish off what is the bottom of our piece. So we have all these pieces down here and now what I wanna do is add the fringe but as I add the fringe, we're gonna, these pieces are going to become part of the fringe. So I'm gonna actually flip this around so I can get my bearings here. Cause this is the right side up. And we need to decide what we're doing for the fringe. So one option, which is my, kind of my go-to at this point is cotton string, which I love because what I love most about it is you don't have to steam it to make it straight. And I actually do think that would look really nice. So maybe we'll go with that, but maybe we'll do... Hmm. Okay, wait. Just give me a second. Let's see here. Where's that piece that I've done before? Oh, it's freaking cold in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do single strands of five millimeter cotton string and and I'm gonna just kind of pick a length here that I think looks pretty good so I'm gonna cut enough lengths of this I'm gonna do one wrap of the five millimeter around every two strings but when we get to a spot where the yarn is there we're gonna mix that in so I need 14 pieces Okay, I have all my pieces of fringe and I'm going to basically have to wrap these around like a regular Raya knot. I'm gonna match up my ends and then I'm gonna just push them up. And then we have to put some plain weave and some structure underneath. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna let those go up like that. And now that I'm at one where we have the yarn, since it's going along this warp string, I'm just wrapping that Raya knot right around the warp string as well as that piece of yarn. And then we can just sort of situate this so it sits down into that once we have the structure underneath. So I'm just gonna continue that all the way across. So on this one, the warp strings, this yarn goes with this warp string so I can wrap my fringe around that. And we can sort of tighten up those Raya knots once we have the plain weave underneath. Okay, so to finish this off, we're gonna finish like I would normally start, which is, um, which is how we started the top actually. So we're just gonna do a twining stitch and a few plain weave rows. What I'm gonna do is the twining and then plain on top of it and then just push it all up to go underneath the fringe. And what I wanna look out for is that I'm making sure that this actually looks straight. And then we can bring down the fringe and we can kind of go back and tighten it up a bit. Now, I wanna be really careful that 
I'm gonna squish that plain weave I did at the bottom pretty tight because I wanna make sure that we're not gonna really see it through the fringe. But I love the way that these colors are coming right down into the fringe. So I'm just gonna tighten up those Raya knots. And we can of course push this back up. Since we have no cardstock on the bottom, it's making everything wanna kind of shift around on us a bit. But we'll be able to solve that when we knot everything. I'm gonna give that one more little tightening, tightening at the bottom. And now we'll just get all those ends to the back and then we'll tuck them in. Okay, so we're ready to tuck the ends in and this is gonna be some of the simplest tucking in ends. I'm just going to weave them in similar to what we did on the front with the colors, but I'm just grabbing back the back loops this time. So tuck one in, trim it off, and we do that exact process with all of the ends. So tuck one in, trim it off. So tuck one in, trim it off. So tuck one in, trim it off. And we do that exact process with all of the ends. I'm ready to take this off the loom and I'm gonna start at the bottom because we know that we're hanging the dowel directly from the loops at the top. So I want to strategically take this off the bottom. My Bottom has gotten a little bit crooked, so I'm just gonna make sure that that's looking really nice and square, like to the loom. So that looks good there. And I think what I'm gonna do, since I have a good amount of slack, is I'm going to take the loops off one by one and tie them up. So on each end, I'll be doing three at a time, but for the rest, I'll do two. Make sure they're nice and close to that twining stitch. Okay, so my bottom is knotted. So now I can take this off the loom. And we need to decide exactly what we're doing at the top here. So I could just, I think just hang this right from the loops. I was curious about possibly doing an overhand knot, but these loops are pretty short. So I could have gone with a bit of a thicker dowel, but I think I'm just going to slip this right through the loops and just keep it really simple. So that's what it looks like. And I think it works great. It's super, super easy. We didn't knot, we didn't do anything. We just literally slipped the dowel through the loop. So that's one advantage of weaving upside down like that because you can make sure that those loops are really nice and short. I'm going to quickly tuck in all of these warp strings because we don't want them kind of hanging down below. I'm gonna cut off this fringe so it's nice and even because our, our yarn pieces were definitely a little bit longer than they needed to be, but better to be too long than too short. I'm going to use the groove of my table to cut this because I just find it's a really great way to make sure that it's nice and straight. And then I'm just gonna come down here and trim it all up. And then I still need to add a little hanging string at the top. I'm going to use the same string I used for the warp. And I'm just gonna tie myself a little hanging string. So here's a look at the finished project. I love this technique and I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love this playlist.